always remember as a coach that the story you're telling them is not necessarily the truth, but it's their truth. Um, so we don't need to um, take that take that story and use that story as sort of the foundation of what's really happening. Um, when, when individuals first start to tell you their story, they're usually a little, you know, they're upset about what's been happening. They're usually a little uncertain about why is this happening to me? They may, may feel like the victim. If you hear those things happening, you want to try and help them feel more empowered um, and to normalize the conflict. You know, conflict happens all the time. The other day I had somebody in my office who was talking about something very similar. That happens a lot in my office. Someone calls me and I hear, you know, about this horrible conflict they're involved with and how upsetting it is. And, you know, I'm usually able to help them understand that, you know, you're not the only person who's dealing with this. I hear about this um, quite frequently. It, cal it does calm them down. So uh, I'm going to ask you all to take 30 seconds. And before um, we start talking about how to have um, how to do this stage, um, Decide what you what you need to do to help you um, work to help you avoid getting caught up in any biases you might have, and to help you with listening those listening skills. So it's like a thirty minute, I mean a thirty second. Get yourself centered. And from there, I usually hear, you know, 
15, 20 minutes of what's been happening. And if I don't get enough information, I may follow up with, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about? So with some people, you have to do a little more prodding, but you don't have to ask 10 questions in the beginning. When I give you this handout, you're going to see four or five questions for this initial story. One may be all you need to ask. He's just giving you, a, giving you a variety of different questions to use. Um, once you, again, once you have that, um, have an idea of what's going on, then you start moving into refining the story, getting down to more specifics, starting to ask questions about, well, are there any other people involved? Oh, yeah, my friend down the hall. You know, he doesn't like, um, he doesn't like him either. Now, and he's always hanging out. Okay, so now there's another party involved who could be contributing to the conflict, and you've found out that, you've gotten that information. So you want to, again, just, uh, you're gonna start asking questions about, well, what has your, you know, how has your roommate responded, you know? And what do you think your roommate would say if your roommate heard your story? Because most likely they haven't heard the whole story. Um, and how do you um, how do you think your roommate sees this situation? So all of a sudden they're standing in the other person's shoes. And when they're able to sort of gain, even if it's just a partial idea or perspective of what the other party may be feeling or seeing or going through, it sort of opens things up. And it, it allows for it allows more opportunities for change. They say when other individuals can start seeing one or more one another's perspectives, uh, it often lead, and respecting one another, uh, it often leads to building trust. And that's where we can start to see some some movement in resolving conflict. You're certainly not going to get there, uh, and then, you know, right away. You switch. Uh, and then testing the story. That's where um, the coach is really just going to ask some more questions that might be a little more tougher. Uh -huh. Like, are you really sure that this is true? So if someone has this assumption of, you know, my roommate is just out to get me. Every time I come home, um, the music's blaring and he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to turn it off. You know, he's just a jerk and he's he really out to get me. Okay. How do you know that he's out to get you? Maybe, you know, he, your roommate likes the music loud, but does it actually mean that it's um, something he's doing to offend you? So the, that's where you kind of start digging and you play devil's advocate. And then once you're through this, through this piece, you're going to do um, some summarizing, and you're going to set an agenda. So the summarizing piece is really going to be, so what we've talked about today is, uh, what I hear you saying is that you and your roommate aren't getting along. Your roommate plays the music really loud, and that bothers you. Um, and there may be three or four other, other issues. You want to summarize those, and then you, um, it's important to say to the party, is that correct? Is there anything else? It's really important to get all that information. If there's more, they'll let you know. Once you have all of that, then you want to help them develop a topic list or an agenda about what you're gonna talk about. There is gonna be a lot of information that, that that individual shares with you. Not all of it is going to be important to discuss to resolve that conflict. They needed to share it, get it out, to air it. As a coach, it's your job to start refining and zeroing in on what's really important to talk about to help them move forward in resolving this conflict. And once you've summarized, you can start saying, um, you can ask, if we talk about A, B, and C, um, do you think that's going to help you work through this conflict, resolve this conflict? If they agree, and those are going to be the things you focus on going forward. If there's more, they'll let you know. On occasion, something else is going to come up. And you'll have to 
backtrack a little bit, talk about it a little bit more, and then um, add that to your agenda. And that's okay. It's it's a flexible process. Um, it's not real linear. When people are talking, they're a little confused, they're upset. Um, it's your job as the coach to sort it all out. skills that you'll be using, which I just talked about, active listening. So my suggestion is to actually 30 seconds to center yourself at the very beginning of this conversation. You know, remind yourself what's important, how to listen, what your role is as a coach. And um, you know, if you if your awareness of some of the biases that you have. We just talked about summarizing and essentially it's just it's just narrowing down the information you heard into a really simple, brief statement about what you heard them say that you think is important for them to discuss. And it's always important to follow up with, is there anything else? And then you set the agenda. So you've, you've just confirmed with them, these are the important issues. Now you want to confirm with them, if we talk about A, B, and C, um, do you think you're going to be able to move forward in addressing or in managing this conflict? Okay. All right. I'm going to hand out a cheat sheet for questions to ask during the different stages. Some of these questions will really make sense and pertain to the situation you're involved in. Some will not. And take what you can use from the other ones. Um, to hang on. Okay. Um,
experiences conflict is often announced when we feel a sense of threatened identity. Something's keeping me from being who I want to be, from being my authentic and true self. And we recognize it because there's this negative emotion that comes along with it. And it manifests itself through this lack of power, we feel unempowered as we go forward. And so ultimately, what we want to keep in mind is that we're trying to shift all three things in order for the conflict to feel resolved. All right? We're looking for fostering positive self-identities. We're looking at feeling empowered. And we're looking for feeling better about the whole thing at the end of the day. So, all three of these are very flexible, but also interdependent. And so we're going to find which area can we get in? What can we wiggle a little bit? Um, where do we have the most play in order to help them feel comfortable? So, as though they can shift the conflict so that it's productive and moving forward for them. So the very first thing we tend to look at is the sense of identity. Um, people are comfortable they believe someone or something is preventing them from being who they want to be, who their authentic sense is. And before I can continue to this, I'm going to move into different types of ways we categorize ourselves, right? We have different identities in play all the time. And these are always in flux. There's going to be times when your sense, your personal sense of identity is going to be stronger than your relationship. But all of us have all of this that we're bringing to the table at any given time. So we have this sense of who we consider ourselves to be. It can be pretty straightforward as to what major you are, or that you are a student. Um, but it could be something that I consider myself independent, or I consider myself a really good friend. I consider myself somebody who works things out. Who, what we think about ourselves. We have who we are in the professional setting. Those are all. what our relationship is with that person that we're in conflict. Okay, you're my friend. You're my significant other, right? You are some stranger on the street. Whatever it is, there's a relationship and that plays into how we choose to enter in that conflict, how we play that out. We all have a role to play and we all have different places in that hierarchy. There's always gonna be people below us and there's always gonna be people above us. And so we look at where we stand where the other person stands as we go forward. We also have cultural background in society, who that makes us and how we play out. So you guys are gonna have people who come to you, um, they got busted drinking in the dorms. Don't you know, are you my friend? Why are you gonna write me up? We're friends. Why would you do that to me? You're all, you know what it's like to be a student here. I thought, we're on equal footing. And you're also on the way. And so we feel a little bit torn when our friends put us in that uncomfortable spot. We feel as though we have these different things competing all the time. And so it feels uncomfortable for us. We have to figure out what trumps what in particular scenarios. So before I give you guys an example, I'd just like to hear from you guys. Can you guys think of any time where you've been in conflict or People have come to you, your friends, where they felt different, different identities were in conflict. One or more of these were in play. Thank you. 